Hello and welcome everyone to our series, our next series. This is our second webinar of the series for our strategic partnership with To Increase. Um, today's webinar is going to be about how we can use supply chain uh, and, and, and integrate that with Dynamics 365 FNO to create integrations of the CAD and PLM systems. My name is Ziad Paracha and I am the Partner Alliances Manager here at Encore and today we've got a a uh, fairly sizable team, both from Encore and um, uh, to increase to present this uh, webinar for us. Eric, next slide, please. I'll hand it off to uh, Alfred here to do a quick introduction as well. But uh, uh, like I said, I've been with Encore for five five years now, uh, working on the partner channel. Uh, we've done uh, immense amount of um, uh, you know partner webinars and so on. We'll do a little bit of housekeeping rules here as well. Uh, so we will give a recording, I share the recording of this webinar as well as a follow-up email as well as the slide deck. So, um, and, and if there are any questions that come up, feel free to pose those questions in the questions chat and I will be um, uh, monitoring that and, and posing the questions near the end of our uh, webinar series as well. Alfred, over to you, buddy. Wonderful, thanks, Yad. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. We're really happy to be here with our partner to increase. Uh, this is uh, the second webinar uh, as a series of webinars that we are doing. So we are really glad you're able to join us. I am Alfred Salgaraja. I'm an account executive on the Encore sales team and have been within the dynamic space for close to about 12 years now, helping customers select, evaluate uh, a number of different Microsoft-based uh, technologies. We're really proud to be here, given our expertise in the PLM space. So we're really excited to share some of our, our specialized knowledge and insights today. Thanks. I will allow uh, uh, Jim to do a quick intro. Hi, Jim Schwab with Two Increase. I am an account executive uh, handling our uh, uh, Dynamics FNO uh, ISV sales in the US. Good to be with you today. Wonderful. Let me ask Mike Lamb to do a quick intro. Yes. Yeah, I'm Mike Lamb, the uh, practice lead for D365 business applications here at Encore. So I oversee the finance supply chain and also the customer engagement teams here at Encore, which includes the customer <laughs> service, sales, marketing, and field service also, and the delivery of those. And I've been with Encore uh, about six years now, and then previously with another partner for another uh, five years prior to that, uh, the Encore bought out previously. So we're excited to partner up with uh, Two Increase today on this webinar for PLM integration. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Mike. Eric? Yeah, my name is Eric van Hofwegen. I'm with To Increase. I've been at To Increase uh, 17 years. I'm a solution consultant there. I help. Uh, I give the, the demonstrations, of course, but also help uh, partners in a uh, more architect uh, way of thinking and also customers uh, in that area as well. So uh, give them uh, the best possible solution. That's me. Wonderful. Um, uh, Eric, if you can help move uh, to the next slide, we'll go through uh, the agenda really quickly uh, so that we, we have a clear understanding of what we're going to cover. So as I had mentioned, this is the second webinar out of a series of webinars that uh, we have organized. In case you missed the first webinar, we will paste the link for you uh, in, the, in the chat uh, uh, section that, that you can take a look at. The gist of what we prepared for you today is the first webinar was, was generally a conceptual overview of the PLM integration and how it works with your PLM systems, uh, as well as um, finance and operations or finance and supply chain, as it's called now. Today will really be a deep dive, and we will cover the, the details of how that integration happens through various PLM systems, as well as different file types. So really, the essence of today's session is to go a little bit deeper into how that works. And as, as part of our experience of having done this for many, many years, we, we also want to share some best practices by way of the do's and don'ts that we've, we've seen um, uh, through you know, different projects that we've done. So we'd love to cover that as well. Um, we want to start off with a really quick introduction uh, with the respective organizations that are here today. So um, Encore Business Solutions, we've been in the dynamics of Microsoft space now close to about 32 years. We are a systems integrator, and so we implement a number of different Microsoft Dynamics-based uh, solutions, whether it's business central, but we're talking about finance and supply chain today. We do a number of things around the power platform as well as the, the customer engagement stack. Um, and uh, 
uh, you know, one of our key specialities is really bringing that cross cross uh, platform capabilities, which customers tend to tend to enjoy. We are hundred percent North American based, so we do a lot of work um, in in Canada as well as uh, the US. So I want to keep the introduction short and have uh, Jim do a quick introduction of Two Increase, and then we'll go from there. Thanks, Alfred. Uh, so Two Increase, uh, all we do is make uh, add-on solutions for Microsoft ERP. Uh, these days, of course, Dynamics uh, uh, D365FNO. Uh, we know how to get data into this into FNO, take data out of FNO. We really specialize in integrations. And uh, of course, here today we're talking about PLM integration uh, and uh, uh, many other solutions for EDI data quality uh, as well. But uh, uh, and we've been doing that for 18 plus years, many hundreds of customers uh, across the globe. Next slide, Eric. So from uh, our first uh, webinar, this is a series, this is our second one. Uh, we did uh, talk about our out-of-box solution that we have. We've, we've done uh, so many PLM integrations that we've developed templates for Siemens Team Center, PTC Windchill, uh, and uh, 3DX to salt, uh, and we can configure integrations for really any PLM uh, or CAD uh, system. Um, and uh, looking forward to talking through those today. Slide. So a lot of reasons to uh, connect engineering in your organization to finance and operations. So it uh, uh, mainly it uh, it uh, um, it creates automation. It reduces manual true up of data uh, between the systems. It improves quality and speed to market. Uh, collaboration across departments. You want your engineers working in the engineering solution that they understand, and you want your finance, operations, manufacturing, supply chain folks working in FNO. Uh, and and that's where you get the efficiencies when the two systems are talking seamlessly to each other. Uh, and you, but you have to have partners that that know your business, know your business processes in order to implement those. Uh, and uh, Encore does does that for us. Next slide, please. So like, like I said, we have done this for over 18 years. We're very deeply embedded in the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, we have many uh, uh, referral customers uh, and uh, um, uh, many other solutions that we have uh, in the marketplace. And uh, we can you know just kind of move on to the next slide unless eric you have anything to add here well this is about actually we uh, the you see the engineering change management module uh here that was uh, muhammad is referring to that is one of our products that we had for a 2012 and that was called uh, product engineering and uh, we upgraded to dynamics 365 and at a certain moment microsoft this uh, said okay this is a really good product we want to move it into the standard and uh, and that was happened and now engineering change management is part of standard dynamics 365. yeah and so we have a very deep understanding of how to turn that on turn that module on in fno configure it to receive uh, the plm data yep exactly so and then the next slide um, is about uh, the overview uh, that i've done um, in the other webinar, webinar number one, again, Alfred uh, mentioned that in the agenda, uh, there's the link uh, that you can view as well. What was uh, demonstrated there, how uh, actually an import took place. And if you look at it in a schema or a, a process, it, it will look something like this. Where, uh, and that's what, what we're also doing is uh, we, uh, a PLM system uh, or an engineer actually is, is finishing designing uh, the product. And at a certain moment, uh, at the end of the workflow, it will be then uh, sent out to, uh, yeah, as a file. It could be XML, could be Excel, like like Alfred said. It will be sent out uh, and made available for other systems to pick up. And that is something that we're using. Uh, we will pick up that file. Uh, and like demonstrated before, I will import it into staging area. And then uh, it will be part of Dynamics 365. And 
that is the process uh, that of course handled and implemented uh, the moment uh, you will uh, start using the solution. And how that's set up, I will uh, go into in, in more details today. The data uh, that we're sharing is the following. Um, we have on the left side, again, that PLM system. It could be all kinds of different ones, as uh, Jim uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, that data that we can share, it can be shared, uh, is the following. And that can be then imported nicely into uh, Dynamics 365. And um, the latest release also gives you the ability to import a process plan. And in Dynamics 365, you call that a routing. So that is also now, uh, now available. And what was uh, imported there uh, and how is that handled is um, yeah, the following. And I will give you a few, just a highlight of what it looked like, uh, that previous demo in webinar one. Um, we are here in a staging area. And in that staging area, we would receive a file and that file shows a lot of lines in the bill of material. And then also certain category types is of course the engineering change management module. And these then when would be posted uh, with after some validation and the result would be that the release products are here now present in Dynamics 365. That is typically what you see also in the integration. A user will not see a lot if an integration is working, it's simply uh, coming in. And uh, of course, the user can be notified if new products or uh, engineering change orders are being uh, imported in the system. Now, the following step, uh, let me explain a little bit uh, to you how that is set up and how that will work. Um, the, and that is something that the principles of the integration and how the framework is working. Mentioned before, we make use of engineering change management with all these different functions. Uh, and like Jim mentioned, if you want to know more, we know a lot uh, about it since we were actually a long time ago the, the builder and the inventor of the solution. Now, when we do an import, uh, we do that through the framework. And that framework is highly configurable. So you can configure a certain areas of uh, what is a setup, are there translations needed, uh, things like that. And that is in our PLM framework. That framework is not only an integration tool picking up a file. Uh, no, it's also some setup that is in Dynamics 365. And last sentence, very important. I highlighted it in webinar one as well. Uh, we can import products, but we can also import the reference and the change order itself. So somebody in production has an idea of what was changed uh, in this new version, or maybe this new delivery of a product. That is something that you can uh, see as well. The process itself uh, will again look like this. Uh, we have, we get a file, we move it into our framework, the framework, and then uh, engineering change management will give us a lot of enriched data, so default data. Now, let me take you in the system on how this setup works and how is the framework working actually? So, and that is my uh, small demo of that. So I will navigate uh, to a different tab page and I will then highlight the PLM system, which is part of the framework. So this is uh, the systems that we're using. This is my demonstration system, but you already see Winchelm named, you see uh, Team Center, the T4EA uh, for the users that, uh, are using Team Center, they will recognize this, but PTC Windshield, Team Center, uh, and, and other possibilities here as well. Uh, one of them is also a generic one, it's called ECM PLM. Uh, that's a more generic one which we can utilize to uh, connect all kinds of different PLM systems, uh, maybe Agile, maybe, maybe others. And, uh, and that is something uh, that we can do. We can also set up then uh, more information in that framework, in the system, we can, if needed, and if I scroll down a little bit, we can map attributes. So you can have attribute values that are important for uh, yeah, this, the product information inside the Dynamics 365. We can, we can store that and we can pick it up from the interface. Uh, there are customers, uh, I've, I've talked to customers and they said, okay, typically we do about five to 10 attributes per product per import. That is simply typically what we do. You of course know in engineering change management, you can also search based on attribute values uh, to find the correct product. 
If you scroll down a little bit lower, then you see a possibility of mapping attribute values to actual field values in Dynamics 365. It can also be quite important. In this case, is depth, but you can do width, length, and other fields. You can give them a value coming from the PLM system. Scrolling down a little bit more is uh, the following around the state. If you are on a state, as you see here now, that uh, what you have in the system, also in engineering change management, you can have a certain life cycle status. In this case, it's operational. That means I can or I can't do certain transactions with the solution. But probably the state itself is different or named different in the PLM system. So what we need to do is uh, also do a transformation setup that we say at the moment the state comes in uh, and it's released, then it should be the operational state in uh, Dynamics 365. And that's something that the mapping we do here uh, as a transformation. And all the way in the bottom, we need to make sure what the correct engineering product category details is. An engineering category deal in change management uh, can help you with what attributes are available, um, what is the readiness checks that need to be done. For instance, that a user needs to come in and check prices. And also uh, based on the categories, what template product will I use? during the import of this product so what default information will be sent up this can be based on again attribute values that come from the plm system in this case if the part type is a distinct then i'm using this category if the part type is a variant then i want to use another product category now, these are more generic uh, terms, but it could, of course, be that you say I'm, I'm selling pumps or junction boxes or generators. And then if the part I have a certain code for a generator, then you have, of course, an engineering product category detail for the generator. And of course, we can also work with uh, the different variants. In this case, it's a configuration, but we can also use uh, the colors, the styles, all the product dimensions that you have inside the Mix 365. So this is part of the setup. And this setup, this system, is also connected to something that's called a project. And talking about the project, that's something that I want to use as a next topic. So I will go back to my slides. And then in my slides, uh, I want to explain you something. Because also the title says, how can we create those integrations with all kinds of different file types and, and make it simple? Because XML looks a little bit different than Microsoft Excel, right? So how, how can we do that? And the integration engine that we're using uh, is called uh, Connectivity Studio. And all integrations uh, are based on certain setup. And this is that setup. We have in the integration, we have a connector and a document. In the connector, I will describe, okay, where do I get the file from? And typically what you see in our implementations that the PLM system, after the workflow is done, the engineer is ready, it will deliver the file into a certain folder. And the connector then, in that case, points to that folder and takes a look at if there's a file available. And of course, if you are an automated run, it will pick up the file and import it into Dynamics 365. So that is something that you set up, where to look. Then in the document, I describe what is the file type. Could be XML, could be Excel and others and that let me show you that in a moment and then of course in the target that would be dynamics 365 you can decide what would be my engineering company or which company will i release to and that's also a connector and also the structure how you want to set it up this structure of course is pre-built already in in messages that we have but if you want to do changes uh, let me show you in that message how easy a change can be done and that is something that for my next part of the demonstration so let me switch back to Dynamics 365. And I highlighted already that project here. It says demo ECM PLM project. So if I go to another dashboard, sorry, another tab, then you see here the business integration design dashboard. And in this dashboard, in the left top corner, you will see that now there's a project and that's the demo project. And in that project, I will see something called a message. In that message has that all that mapping. Uh, remember source connector, source document, target connector, and target document. If I take a look here on the details of that message, it will show you in a moment. 
Yep. It will show you the entire mapping. So here you see a fully configurable integration. So, and I can quite easily make changes if I want. If I want to select something else for a file name field, then I can select here and I can choose, for instance, from a list. So if you want to have other information coming from the PLM system, you want to store that somewhere, it is yeah, via configuration. You don't uh, need a developer at that time. You can do it this way and you can just configure that uh, yourself or have a partner do that for you. The document, it says, this is my source document XML. If I take a look here to that document, it describes, takes a moment. It will describe, now you see it, it will describe the structure of the XML file, as you see here. So in my record, in the top node, you will see these are the the fields available in that note. Uh, if there are other fields, for instance, on the item note, uh, then you see other fields. If your XML, of course, uh, is a little bit different that coming from that system, we can still change it quite quickly because if it's now item, I can also make it into item ID or something or another name. That is something that you can do. And again, fully configurable. If, however, you don't have an XML file, uh, what can you do then? Well, then the document type needs to be changed. And that is something that you will see here. You have different uh, document types available. And uh, that would be XML, uh, that could be Excel, that could be a, a fixed text, a comma separated list. Uh, you saw also the integration engine is used for other functionality, but if you focus on PLM, uh, the common parts we will see a fixed text, Excel, XML, and sometimes we can also use JSON, so a web service. So there are different parts. And the only thing actually what you need to do is change the document type, initialize, because there's also an initialize field, initialize uh, the fields and the records that are in the document, and uh, then of course map it in the message to the correct uh, endpoint or the target. So that's how it uh, can be easily configured. Let me now get to my demo slide again. Here we go. And uh, what's next actually is uh, some experience that you want to share with you uh, with the do's and don'ts. And uh, I will give the mic to uh, Mike now. Great. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. And if we could go to the next slide in there. Oh. Do's and don'ts. It's my... Yeah, it's coming, yeah. I hope. All right. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Yep, here through, we go. Through uh, working with our customers in the lot of manufacturing production arena, I we've had a lot of lessons learned along the way. Customers have had uh, run into various scenarios and with their you know, your finance supply chain and then uh, a CAD system, and it sounds easy and, and harmless enough, uh, but it is a big deal. Uh, very important, these CAD, the CAD systems hold all the PLM information uh, and getting that in the uh, ERP side of the house, uh, finance supply chain management is very critical. We have all the, the product info, the bomb details, all that stuff for the manufacturing process, and it is a, a large animal. So on the, the do's uh, best practice for PLM integration is really involving the SMEs early in the, to capture all the requirements. And the SMEs really in this case, uh, not just the core you know, uh, accounting, finance, and supply chain folks, but also those that are using the uh, CAD system, the engineering team, make sure they're involved right from the, the beginning of your FNO deployment. Um, that's what success has looked like in the past, is having those folks, at least uh, at least one of them on the team, right from the analysis stage of, they can have their input or see uh, you know, what their, their flow, business process flow needs to be, um, and get their, their requirements down there early on in the system, because it is truly integrated at that point. Later on, when we go to deploy it. Um, analyze your, your product data for readiness for the integration. So another thing is just the, the data quality, ensuring the information coming from your your PLM system is uh, 
you know, of good quality and, and preparing for that, because uh, it's going to need some good structured data coming over into FNO. And then also just going back to one of the, you know, training uh, users on the benefits. So that just goes back to having the engineering, uh, some representation early on so they start seeing the the benefits and the entire team sees the you know, the overall efficiencies automation you can see during eric's uh demo there uh, the company as a whole uh, one person may have a little extra work but the entirety of the solution you can gain economies of scale and especially a lot of our our folks the reason why they're doing these types of projects with finance supply chain integrating with their cad system plm is their business you know growth uh either their volume is really high to start with or most customers, you know, they're, they're in this growth phase right now and really uh, want to be able to do do more without hiring a ton more resources uh, along the way. So this helps uh, streamline that. Uh, some of the don'ts is building it yourself. It sounds harmless enough that you could just build an integration uh, between finance and supply chain in your CAD system, PLM system. I uh, We definitely recommend uh, against that. So this is... A, industry best practice pattern of using a pre-built integration they're they're already out there they're very complex you could see what eric was showing is you know all the product data the bill materials all those things and then what happens when you know taking advantage of engineering change management you know the product changes along the way and that always happens and releases and factoring all that in there it, it can become a very uh, expensive and complicated endeavor if you try to build it on your own. Um, ignoring a data migration, so cleaning up your data again, uh, going back to, I can't stress this enough about the data quality, you know, early on getting, looking at the data uh, coming from the PLM uh, early on and making sure it's going to map out and, and it's cleaned up uh, instead of waiting till the last uh, your leader of your ERP uh, finance supply chain deployment. Uh, you don't want to get to UAT and then figure out you got a kind of data cleanup you need to do. Uh, and then also adding repeated customization. So uh, that again is capturing the requirements, the process with the engineering team in the early stages of the project when it's getting kicked off in the analysis stage, not waiting till you're down the road, uh, FNO is well under its way, you're good, you, know, you have the solution pretty well defined and then then coming up with all these uh, customizations that are needed is very painful later on. So it's a lot better to get those up front. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Eric. Well, I think we have some time for question and answers. Sure. We have two minutes left, so... Um... Actually, I want to ask Riyad, uh, are there any questions? There is a question that came in regarding the PLM integration. Um, they're asking, can you do a PLM integration without actually doing the engineering change management piece? I, I can take that definitely for sure. Uh, we use the engineering change management piece uh, for, for functionality and defaults. Uh, if you want to do an, uh, an, an, an integration with uh, without engineering change management, actually uh, it's best to use the connectivity studio module, that configurable module that we have, and then uh, we can definitely import uh, products and bill materials without the use of engineering change management. But you, Eric, you lose version control, correct? You will you lose version control because that is not part of uh, with that you don't have that without uh, engineering change management. Typically, all of our customers would utilize engineering change management. That's one of the core core ones they actually want to, and then it drives the PLM integration discussion. Typically, yep. Thank you, Eric and team. There's another one that's popped in here around why we should do the implementation out of the box versus the custom integration piece that's there that you mentioned. Jim, will you want to take that one? It, it broke up for me, sorry. Out of the box versus uh, custom oh, yeah. integration. <clears throat> we talked about that a bit in the do's and don'ts, but um, uh, you know, having a, an embedded solution from 
an ISV Microsoft community approved vendor like us, uh, we get you know the updates from Microsoft three or four weeks before the end, you know, the general market does. So uh, uh, when you have our standard um, out of the box implementation uh, installed, we handle the upgrades for you. We test those. Uh, we have, you know, proven methodology uh, and uh, along with Encore, our partners, deep, deep knowledge in um, uh, what to do with the data once it's in FNO. So, um, and not to even mention the cost. Cost of initial build is at least 3x, uh, and then maintenance over time um, as well. Risk of um, updates causing more maintenance and and uh, uh, and downtime. Um, those are the things we find uh, are the you know the the major points in you know going with the standard solution versus uh, versus manual. Thank you, Jim. I think we have one more question that's come in here around our, it says, how long is a typical implementation and what's our uh, estimation process or experience around the implementation cycle? I can take that too. Uh, well, um, and uh, Encore team too. Um, you know, we, uh, there's setting up and configuring the ECM module to receive the PLM data. There's making sure that we get the uh, the output from the PLM system uh, in the right XML format or uh, Excel. Um, typically, we're looking at around 150 hours. Uh, that could be over the course of two months or three months, depending on how the availability of, of the end customer. So that's that's the short answer. And Mike, can you take on maybe the, the Dynamics uh, uh, 365 implementation side of that question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Just uh, an overview there. I think we have uh, a slide on our implementation methodology. If we could bring that up real quick. Definitely. And Bear with me. I need to uh, get the slide in. Go for it. Yeah. So okay. while we, while we're we waiting. Go. Uh, Here we the, go. All right. Awesome. Thank you. So we work uh, very closely with Microsoft Fast Track uh, on larger enterprise projects with finance supply chain management. A customer already gets a Fast Track uh, uh, architect uh, with the pro dedicated to the project, but we've adopted uh, Fast Track's you know, best practice methodology, success by design, and and our methodology is really uh, kind of this uh, agile uh, but waterfall to start with uh, analysis. So we kind of go through. On the analysis side, capture the business, make sure we have the business process uh, defined with the customer and requirements. So the more the customer has that ready to go, that's you know quicker the implementation, obviously, the project can go. So you, a customer already has really good, well-defined business processes across the board um, and requirements, uh, capture those. And then from there, we, we'll develop our estimate for actual deployment uh, solution modeling in, in go live there and give the customer a really good, accurate uh, timeline of what it'll take to deploy the solution, including any third party products, something like to increase the PLM integration factoring right in that um, in there. And, and then from there on solution modeling, we'll run basically in kind of a sprint agile methodology and continuous working with the subject matter experts on everything from uh, teaching them uh, how to you know work with the system training them uh, ensuring the process requirements any gaps we run across there mitigating those gaps with the customer and then rolling into uat and then deployment and go live so uh, as far as timeline goes that i uh, a typical project could run anywhere from uh, a year from a full uh, net new finance supply chain deployment with a two increase PLM CAD integration uh, farther out, just depending on the customer's timeline. Oftentimes, customers have other projects, other priorities. It really depends on if the customer, you have the, your resources, subject matter experts backfilled, if they could become 
you know, 100% available for this project, then the timeline shrinks up. If they can't, which is normally because everybody needs to run their business, right? So then, then the timeline will adjust accordingly to work with the customer on the project. Thank you. That's all the questions that I see in the chat now. But if there are any questions that you guys have, feel free to reach out to us. I know we've got, um, you know, you'll have contact information from all of us uh, on the call here today. So feel free to reach out. Um, and again, thank you very much for, for the presenters and the audience and everyone that's attended today. Uh, you will get a recording of this, as I mentioned earlier, as well as the, the slide share as well. So stay connected and looking forward to, uh, for you guys joining our next webinar in this series as well. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much, everybody. Appreciate you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.